The gunpowder plot of 1605 was a failed assassination attempt against King James I of England by a group of English Catholics. They wanted to kill King James so he would be replaced by his daughter, third in line of succession, Princess Elizabeth. We celebrate the 5th of November as the day the plot was foiled, so here are five facts about the plot many people may not know. The plague may have helped prevent the gunpowder plot being successful. On the 5th of November, Guy Fawkes was found underneath the Houses of Parliament with 36 barrels of gunpowder ready to be ignited, blowing up the building and killing the King. But the plot to blow up Parliament was to be executed much sooner than the 5th of November. The Houses of Parliament was to have its state opening, which marks the formal start of the parliamentary year, and this date was set for the 28th of July, 1605. But due to the plague epidemic and the fear of any royalty being exposed to such disease, this date was pushed back to October, and then again to the 5th of November. But the barrels of powder were in position on the 20th of July, eight days before the original opening. So if the plague hadn't have been present, would the plot have been successful, as the opening of Parliament would have been much sooner, leaving less time for the suspicion to arouse? Guy Fawkes, who we all famously know and burn on the bonfire on the 5th, wasn't the only man. 13 Catholic men were involved in the plan to blow up the Houses of Parliament. The ringleader was Robert Catsby, Guy Fawkes was more of the muscle behind it, as he was an excellent soldier and highly experienced with gunpowder due to his previous Catholic battles. His main role was to gather the barrels of powder, move them into the cellars of the Parliament building and finally light the fuse and escape before the 15 minute ignition reached the nearly 2 tons of explosives. He was going to travel by boat across the Thames River, and then it's believed he would live out his life or maybe plot another attack with Robert Catsby. The other men had their own roles. Thomas Percy, a 44 year old devoted Catholic who had a hate for King James, was in charge of hiring out the location in which the barrels of gunpowder were to be positioned. Thomas Winter could speak several different languages, so he was the group's spy sent to gather information on King James's whereabouts and other vital information. The other men all had their own roles, but very little credible information is out there. It's believed the other members were either looking after certain documents and equipment, or supplying money for the plot. Guy Fawkes was brutally tortured to give evidence of his companions. When Guy Fawkes was found on the 5th of November, he was captured by guards and interrogated. He told the guards his name was John Johnson, and when he was asked why he was there with all those barrels of gunpowder, he replied, to blow you Scotch beggars back to your native mountains. Fawkes fully admitted his intentions to blow up the Houses of Lord and expressed great regret at his failure to do so. On the 6th of November, due to Guy Fawkes' non-cooperative manner, King James gave permission for mild torture to be introduced to Guy. Of course, this progressed to the harshest torture devices England had to offer, and it is believed he was placed on the rack, a device that was used on stubborn victims who would not give information. It is believed that only after he found out his fellow plotters had either been captured or killed, trying to escape, did he reveal their identities. In these famous pictures, you can see the torture was taking its toll on Guy. Here is his signature before any torture, and here it is again after 72 hours of so-called mild torture. On the 30th and 31st of January, Guy Fawkes and other remaining plotters were hung, drawn and quartered. Their heads and other portions of their bodies were set up at different points around Westminster and London. The plot was foiled by one simple letter, the Monteagle letter. If not for one letter sent by an unknown person, Guy Fawkes would have lit the fuse to the barrels, and we may be living different lives to what we are today. But on the 26th of October 1605, while sitting at supper at his house in London, William Parker, who was the 4th Baron Lord Monteagle, received a letter warning of the gunpowder plot. As he was to attend the state opening of Parliament on the 5th of November, it's believed someone didn't want him to die. This could be due to the fact he was a Catholic, and many members didn't like the idea of killing fellow Catholics, innocent people, and possibly children. The exact sender of the letter may never be known, but many believe it was Francis Tresham, who was one of the 13 plotters in the attack. His sister, Elizabeth Tresham, was married to William Parker. Another reason to believe the sender was Francis is due to the fact that after he was captured, he was poisoned in his cell. The fact that he was poisoned quickly led to rumours that this was organised by Monteagle and other members, as it was the letter, probably from Tresham, that led to the discovery of the plot and the capture of a number of terrorists. Poisoning would have spared him from being hung, drawn and quartered like the other members, which would have almost been a reward for his warning. For his service in protecting the crown, Monteagle was rewarded with £500 and £200 worth of land, which was considered a lot back in the 1600s. The gunpowder plot may have never worked in the first place. Despite all the planning, the delays and even the Monteagle letter, many scientific experts are certain the plan wouldn't have worked. The fuse to the barrels that was installed in July would have been too affected by the damp and cold condition the Parliament cellar was exposed to, and this would have rendered the fuse unlightable. 
Of course, we will never know for certain if the fuse would have lit, but even if it did, it's also believed that the 1 plus tons of gunpowder was spoiled, as gunpowder has to stay dry. Since the opening of Parliament was pushed back, the gunpowder would have been sitting for longer just like the fuse. Once discovered, the barrels of powder were sent to the Tower of London, and there they were declared as decayed. Now, whether it was decayed or not is also argued, as decayed gunpowder would have been powder that was clumped together, as this would not fit into the barrels of the musket guns. But if this was the case, then despite the powder being clumped together, it still would have been ignitable. So not knowing exactly what they meant by decayed, we will never know if the gunpowder plot would have worked, one of life's many mysteries. So remember, remember, the 5th of November, Gunpowder Treason and Plot.